All right, I'm so excited to see so many people who are joining us. All right, everybody, welcome to the first part of our Think Like an Engineer webinar series. My name is Sydney and I will be your instructor today. We also have a co-host named Kayla. Now, you won't be able to see Kayla's face on the screen, but Kayla will be moderating our chat box. So if you ask a question in the chat box or if you um, need help, Kayla will be the one to answer that question for you. And we are ready to get started. So we're gonna to start today by reading a land acknowledgement for the Sacramento area. You can read along with me on your computer screen or just listen. We acknowledge that we are on the territory of the Nisanan, Southern Maidu, and Valley Miwok peoples. We honor the people, the elders, and the ancestors who have been caretakers of this land for thousands of years and who were forcibly removed from this land. For their sake and for the sake of the natural systems, and their inhabitants, we aim to respect this land on which we are humble visitors. Thank you all for listening to that. All right, so today, while we are together on this webinar, there are a couple different features that we're gonna be using. You might already be familiar with these, but if not, don't worry, we will teach you how to use them. The first one is the chat feature. So at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar, you will see a box that looks like this little chat box. We're gonna be using that today to answer some questions, to share some ideas. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the webinar, you can go ahead and ask a question right in that chat box. Right now, let's practice using that. I would like you to type in that chat box what grade you are in. So go ahead and find that chat box icon and then type in there what grade you are in. All right, let's see, we've got second grade, third grade, second grade, third grade. Wow, awesome. Lots of friends from some different grades. This is so exciting. There's first grade, third grade, and a sister in kindergarten, seventh grade, fifth grade. Awesome. Thank you all for doing that. Fourth grade, third grade fourth grade and a brother in first grade. How fun. All right, nice job, everybody. The next feature we're gonna be using is this raise hand feature. Now, we're gonna use that today to check in. So when we are doing our different experiments, I might ask you to show me that raise hand feature. And that will just let me know that you are on the same page, that you're done with your experiment and that you're ready to move on. So let's go ahead and practice that right now. Go ahead and find that little icon on your Zoom toolbar and just raise that hand. Ooh, awesome. We've got so many hands being raised. Wonderful. All right, now if you have your hand raised, you'll notice that it shows up as green. If you press it again, you can lower your hand. So let's see if we can all lower our hands now. Awesome. You are all pros at Zoom. All right, so today there's gonna be some times that we might ask you to use that chat box feature and we might ask you to use that raise hand feature. If you're ever confused, go ahead and just ask a question and our co-host Kayla will answer that for you. All right, let's get started. So today, we have a really simple recipe for success. And this recipe for success only has three ingredients. And if we do these three things, we're gonna stay safe, we're gonna learn a ton, and we're gonna have fun. So ingredient number one is show respect. I want you to think right now, what are some ways that we can show respect to ourselves and to each other while we're on this webinar? When you have an idea, go ahead and type your idea in the chat box. How can we show respect to ourselves and to each other in this webinar? Ooh, I see some questions about um, what we're gonna be using the Q&A for. We're not gonna be using that feature today, so you can just go ahead and ignore that Q&A feature. We're just gonna use chat and raise hand. All right, ooh, I see that we can help each other out. Someone says they can help their sister out. We can listen respectfully, that's a great idea. Don't have side conversations, being kind. Those are all great ways to show respect. Being thankful, I love that one. 
not interrupting people when they're talking, listening, raise your hand, listen to the speaker, ask questions. Ooh, not messing with the screen, that's a good one. Helping people with technology problems, that might happen. We might have technology problems and we can all help each other out to work through those. Ask questions. Awesome, thank you all for sharing those ideas. Our second ingredient for success is make good decisions. So today while we're together in this webinar, we're just gonna think before we act and think before we speak to make sure that we're doing things that are helpful and not hurtful. And number three, my favorite, is solve problems. And today we're gonna to be solving some problems throughout the webinar together. And you might also have some personal problems you have to solve. Now, if you have a technology problem, you're welcome to get up and ask somebody else in your house for help. If you need to get up to use the bathroom or get a drink of water or go look for some supplies, you are free to do that on your own. You don't have to ask permission. So today we're gonna to be solving problems together as a group, but we might also have some personal problems that we're solving. All right. And before we move on to our fun activities, we just have a few more things to go over. This is our webinar etiquette, and etiquette is just a fancy word for manners. So while we're together today in our Think Like an Engineer webinar, we're gonna make comments that are positive and helpful. So that means that if you're typing in that chat box, make sure that what you're saying is positive and kind and helpful. If you have questions, you can ask them. And if you ever need help clarifying something, if you don't understand what I say, or if you maybe forget an instruction, you can ask that in the chat box and we'll make sure to answer those questions as soon as possible. We're gonna stay engaged. A lot of you said that when you were talking about ways to show respect. So making sure that we're staying engaged in our activities and what we're doing. And the last one is have fun. And if we do all these things, we're gonna have a ton of fun together and we're gonna learn a bunch. If you agree to do all these things, go ahead and show me that raised hand icon. Awesome, so many hands being raised. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. You can go ahead and lower your hand. Perfect. Now to practice using our chat box and because I wanna to get to know you all a little better, I would love to hear what is your favorite animal? What is your favorite animal? Go ahead and type your answer in our chat box. Ooh, cats, a water bear, sloth. A sloth is one of my favorite animals too. Dogs, cheetah, a guinea pig. Ooh, a panda, big cats, a lion and a tiger, a bear, a cat and dog. Lots of people love dogs. I love dogs too. A panda, a Komodo dragon. Awesome. So many interesting animals. All animals, I agree. Horses, white tiger, lynx, and jaguars. So cool. I think my favorite animal today is a sloth too because I'm feeling a little bit tired and I know that sloths are kind of lazy and tired. Thank you all for sharing your favorite animals. All right, everybody. So we're gonna quickly go over some materials that we're gonna need today. And don't worry, I'm gonna give you time to go and get these materials. So if you don't have them by you, that is okay. For today's activities, you are going to need something to write with. That could be a pencil, a marker, a pen, whatever you choose, you just need something to write with. You are going to need two pieces of paper. Now, if you have paper that is recycled, so it might have some print on one side of it, that's okay. As long as you have one paper that has a blank side like this. You need two cups that are the same height. So you could use plastic cups like these, you can use glass cups, you can use paper cups, just as long as they are the same height. And the last thing you're gonna need are 10 pennies or other small objects. So if you don't have 10 pennies, that's okay. You can use anything that you have 10 of the same thing. That could be things like small Legos, paper clips, almonds, chocolate chips, whatever you have 10 of that are the same thing. So right now, I'm gonna give everybody about two minutes to go and collect those materials. And when you get back to your computer and you're ready to move on, I want you to show me that raised hand icon. 
So go ahead, take two minutes to collect your materials. Looks like we already have lots of people who have their materials ready. Awesome. Ooh, it looks like we have some friends that have more than 10 pennies. Perfect. I'm going to give everybody about 30 more seconds. Looks like a lot of people are already back with their materials. We'll just give everybody a little more time. And don't worry, if you don't know what these materials are for, that's okay. I'm going to tell you everything that you're going to do with these materials very soon. All right, looks like we're waiting for a few more people to come back. <laughs> All right. So everybody, today we are going to have a new job title. Today we are going to be engineers. I want you to point to yourself right now and say, I'm an engineer. So we know what our job title is. We are engineers today. But I am curious, who knows what an engineer is or what an engineer does? Hmm. What is an engineer? If you have an idea, go ahead and type it in the chat box. What is an engineer or what do they do? Ooh, engineers make things. Absolutely, engineers do make things. Engineers can fix things. They design and create, they build. An engineer can be many things, that's so true. Ooh, someone who makes things to help people. Someone asked if they paint. That's an interesting question. I wonder if engineers ever do paint. Some engineers might work on cars. They create things to solve problems. They design and build things such as blueprints. Great ideas, everybody. Engineers can do all of those things. And there's a lot of different types of engineers like some of you said. Our definition is a person who solves problems using math and science. So while we are together today, and if you come back for our next webinar, we are going to be engineers and we're gonna be solving problems using some math and some science. Now engineers have a special tool that they help solve problems with, and that is called the engineering design process. And it looks like this. So you notice this engineer design process has five different bubbles. And today we're gonna to learn what each of these bubbles means and how engineers can use this to help them solve their problems. So today we're going to create our own engineer design process because we're gonna be using this to help us solve a problem. The first step in our engineering design process is ask. So in this first bubble up here, this is where an engineer is going to try to figure out what their problem is and they're gonna define some constraints. And we're gonna talk about that word constraints in just one minute. But first, I want you to create your own engineer design process. So on one of your pieces of paper, I would like you to draw five bubbles just like this. I'm gonna give everybody about 30 seconds to go ahead and draw five bubbles on their piece of paper. And show me that raised hand icon once you have your five bubbles drawn. Awesome. Thank you all for showing me that you are ready to move on. Wonderful. All right. Now we're gonna copy down the different steps of our engineer design process so we can keep this with us to help us solve some problems. I'm gonna start mine right up here, but you can pick any bubble to write your first step in. Now our first step is ask. So on the top of my bubble, like I said, I'm gonna choose the top one, but you can choose any bubble you want. I'm gonna write the word ask. And then I'm gonna draw a little question mark to help me remember that in this step, 
engineers are trying to figure out what their problem is. You can choose to write words. You can just draw pictures. Whatever is gonna help you remember this step. Let's go ahead and take about one minute to fill out our first bubble. Awesome, I see some engineers are showing me that they are done because they have their hand raised right now. Great job. Awesome, some people are typing that they are ready to move on and they are done. Take 10 more seconds to finish this bubble. All right, engineers. We talked about that word constraints. Engineers have to define their constraints. And a constraint is just a detail that engineers have to keep in mind while they're solving a problem. So we have a couple examples here. Maybe an engineer only has one hour to solve a problem. That would be a constraint. They have to keep that in mind while they're thinking about how to solve their problem. Another one is maybe you have to stay within your budget. So maybe you only have a certain amount of money to solve a problem. And you have to make sure that you only spend that amount of money. Those are two examples of constraints. And today we're gonna to talk about a problem that I'm having. And I'm gonna tell you some constraints or some little details that I'm gonna to have to keep in mind. All right, so I'm so happy that you are all here with me today because I'm having a problem and I think I need an engineer's help to solve it. This past weekend, I decided that I wanted to go have a picnic by the American River. And so I was sitting by the river and I was eating my sandwich. And all of a sudden I heard this little voice. It was calling out, Sydney, Sydney. I looked across the river. I didn't see anybody there and I thought it was really strange because None of my friends told me they were going to the river. So I thought, hmm, maybe I was just hearing things. So I kept eating my sandwich. And then I heard it again, Sydney, Sydney. So I stood up and I was looking around and all of a sudden I see my friend across the river and they were saying, Sydney, come here. I have something really cool to show you. And I was so excited because my friends seemed really excited and I really wanted to see this cool thing that they had to show me. But I was looking and I noticed there's this big river in between us. Now, here are some details that I have to think about while we're solving this problem. I walked over to the river and I touched it and I noticed it felt really, really cold. And so I decided, ooh, I don't wanna swim across that river, it is too cold. Then I was looking over and I noticed that it's really, really wide and the water was moving really fast. So I was like, hmm, okay. That's gonna make it kind of tricky to get across. And then I was looking to see if I could see the bottom of the water and I noticed the water is really deep. So it's really cold, it's moving very fast and it's really deep. Those are things that I want you to keep in mind as we start to solve this problem. Now before we can solve a problem, we have to Imagine, which is our second step. In the second step of the engineering design process, we're gonna imagine some ideas. So we're gonna brainstorm, we're gonna get super creative and think of all the different ways we could solve this problem, and then we're gonna pick a solution. So right now, in your next bubble, I would like you to go ahead and fill out this bubble. So I'm gonna write imagine on it. I'm gonna draw that little light bulb because that reminds me of an idea. This is what my bubble looks like. You can draw or write whatever you want to help you remember what we do in the second bubble. Let's take one minute to fill out Imagine and show me that raised hand when you are ready to move on. Awesome. 
Wonderful. Lots of hands already raised. Perfect. All right, let's take 10 more seconds, engineers. Thank you to, for showing me that you're done by raising your hand or telling me in the chat box. Ooh, I see some people already have ideas of how we can get across this river. I want you to keep those brilliant ideas right in your head. We're gonna share them in just a moment. This is one of my favorite steps in the engineering design process because we get to be super creative. And I bet you're gonna have so many great ideas that are gonna help me get across that river to my friend. All right, now it's time for us as engineers to start brainstorming. So I wanna know, how do you think I can get across that cold, deep river to see my friend and the cool thing they have to show me? Go ahead and write your ideas in the chat box. Ooh, a boat that goes fast. That would be super nice if I could find a boat to get across. That'd be so quick. Building a bridge. Ooh, using a log. Making a raft. Flying. Make a bridge and put long pillars underneath. Great ideas. Make or design a boat, a raft with a paddle. Ooh, stone jumping. Maybe we could find some big stones and we could walk across them like stepping stones. A basket that is made of straw and floats. Ooh, a boat with logs, a rope bridge or a log bridge. Lego bridge. Hot air balloon. Someone noticed that there's a tree near the picnic that we could use to make a kayak and paddles to row through the river. Awesome. Engineers, those were so many great ideas. I noticed that a lot of you thought that we could make some sort of bridge, either out of a log, or maybe out of ropes, we could build something and use a bridge to get across that river. I was thinking that might be the easiest idea too. So before we can start building our bridge, there's a few more things we have to do. The next step of our engineering design process is to plan. So when we start planning, this is we're gonna make a materials list, we're gonna figure out what we need, we might draw ourselves a plan or a blueprint, and we're gonna start doing some research so we can figure out how we can make this bridge to get across the river. So right now, in your third bubble on your engineering design process, I would love it if you could go ahead and write that word plan or draw a picture to help you remember it. I'm gonna draw a little pencil to help me remember that sometimes engineers might draw something. So I have plan right here. I see that some engineers are already showing me they're ready to move on by raising their hand. Awesome, thank you engineers. Thank you so much. All right, engineers, I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor right now. In your chat box, you have a couple of different options. So you can choose to either talk to all panelists, which would be myself and Kayla, our co-host, or all panelists and attendees. Right now, I would love it if you could go into that chat box and just click all panelists. That will make sure that only Kayla, the co-host, and myself can see those answers. So if everybody could just really quickly go into their chat box, Find that little box, it says two, and then click the arrow so that you are only sharing with all panelists. Thank you so much to everybody who already did it and those who are doing it right now. I'm gonna give everybody a few more seconds to make sure they can do that.
Thank you, engineers. All right. It looks like perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much, engineers. All right, let's move on. So we are ready to start planning and doing some research to figure out how we want our bridge to behave and how we want it to look and feel. Right now, I'm gonna ask that you get these materials ready. So we are going to be using a half piece of paper. So you can take one of the pieces of paper that you got and we're gonna split that in half somehow. Now we're gonna split it in half hamburger style. You can choose to fold it in half like this, crease it a few times and rip it. Or if you have some scissors nearby, you can use scissors to cut it in half. But we're gonna split our piece of paper in half so we have two half sheets of paper. I have my two pieces of paper right here. We are also going to need two cups, so you can go ahead and get those cups ready, those two cups that you picked up, and whatever you got for your small object. That could be pennies or paper clips, whatever you found. So get those materials ready, and I'm gonna teach you how to use those materials in just one moment. All right, so to start, planning and doing some research, we're gonna kind of build a practice bridge. And here's what this is gonna look like. To do our bridge research, I'm gonna slide this down so you can see my space. I have my two cups here, and these cups are gonna be like the supports for my bridge. I'm gonna place them one hand's length apart. So I'm gonna make sure that my hand can fit in between these cups. And we're gonna pretend that the water is flowing right here through these cups. Now, your piece of paper, your half sheet of paper, is going to be like the top of the bridge or the part that people cross. We're going to test out how strong this bridge is by placing our small objects onto the bridge. Now, you'll notice that in our directions it says test your bridge by placing pennies in the middle of the bridge. That's because if we're testing how strong a bridge is, we want to make sure people can walk all the way across it. We know that the parts by the supports are gonna be pretty strong. We wanna test out how strong the middle of the bridge is. So I would like you to go ahead and set your bridge up like this and see how many pennies this bridge can hold in the middle. If you don't have pennies, whatever else you have will work. And when you finish testing for this first time, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, it looks like we have some people who are finished experimenting. Wonderful. Engineers, I'm really curious to know, how many pennies did your bridge hold before it fell down? Go ahead and type that number in the chat box. How many pennies was your bridge able to hold before it fell down? Let's see. Two, two and three, two, 20, oh my goodness. Five, nine, one, 16, zero. I tested this out earlier and I noticed the same thing. When I put my penny in the middle, it couldn't even hold one penny. It fell down after only one penny. Wow, it looks like some people had some more luck and got some more pennies or objects to stay. Two, four, and six. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing those numbers. Now, I have a question for you, engineers. Is there anything that we can do to this piece of paper without adding anything else to it to make it stronger? If you have an idea, type it in the chat box. What can we do to this piece of paper without adding anything else to make it even stronger? 
Ooh, someone thinks doubling it up might make it stronger. Folding it. Folding it in half. Folding it in half and doubling. Lengthening it, interesting. Great ideas. I really appreciate you all sharing your ideas with me. Folding, adding weights. Interesting, putting pennies on the side. Awesome, now remember for this experiment, we're not gonna add anything else to this piece of paper. So we're not gonna add any tape or weights. We're just gonna change the piece of paper with our two hands. All right, engineers, I have another challenge for you. I want you to use one of those ideas that you had to change this piece of paper and do the same thing again. So I'm gonna show you my setup again. I have my cups in the same place. I can put my hand in between them. We're pretending that our water is flowing through here. I want you to change that piece of paper, do the same thing and see how many pennies you can get on there. Now remember, you have two half sheets. So if you wanna try two different things, you can do that. Let's take about two minutes to change this piece of paper and see if we can make it even stronger. Well, a lot of people thought folding it over once or twice might make it stronger. I'm gonna try that. Ooh, I got one on there. Two. That was a little stronger. So, so somebody said folding it twice, doubling it over. I'm going to try that out now. Awesome. It looks like we had some more luck this time. I noticed that I'm able to hold more pennies right now when I folded my paper over as well. Awesome. All right, engineers. If you were able to get more pennies to stay on your second bridge, I want you to show me that raise hand icon. Ah, oh, lots of hands going up. Looks like a lot of people were able to make their second bridge stronger. Um, thank you for sharing that with me. I would love to know, engineers, what did you do to your paper to make it stronger? Looks like a lot of people were able to make their bridge stronger. What did you do to get that paper to be stronger? Go ahead and type it in the chat box. Fold it in, in half. Triple fold. Fold it in half, creased it, folded it four times. Interesting, some people put their first and second paper together. Folded it three times. Awesome, folding it. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of people folded theirs. Ooh. Someone folded in theirs, held 10 instead of zero the second time. Awesome. Put the two papers on top of each other. So they stacked those two papers together. Great ideas, everybody. Why do you think that folding the paper makes it stronger? We didn't add anything to our paper, we just folded it. Why do you think that made it stronger? If you have an idea, you can either just think it in your head or you can type it in the chat box. Why did folding our paper make it stronger? Ooh, it made another layer. It adds more layers. I noticed that too. When I had my first bridge, it only had one layer of paper. And then I tried folding it in half, and it was a little stronger. And I noticed I have two layers. And then I decided I was going to fold mine again. And that time it was really strong. And it has, let's see, one, two, three. Four. Four layers. So it's almost like when we fold our paper, we added more paper on it. Now we have four layers or four sheets of paper. 
Great ideas, everybody. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit more research for our bridge building, and we're gonna look at some bridges that engineers have already designed and built. I want you to look at these two bridges on our screen here. What do you notice about these bridges? You can type your observations into our chat box. What do you notice about these two bridges? Ooh, interesting. One has metal strings. I noticed that too. This one has these metal things that look like strings hanging down from it. Awesome. Some people are noticing the pillars that are holding them up. Ooh, somebody noticed it's a truss bridge. The one bridge on the top has more support. And this one has an arch in it. I noticed that too. Ooh, both of them have lines to the rocks. Interesting. So they both have these things that are connecting them to the rocks on the side. One has a semicircle on the bottom. And somebody noticed that the suspension bridge over here is the Golden Gate Bridge. Awesome. You might recognize some of these bridges. It has a lot of supports and pulls. I noticed that too. All right, so we made a lot of great observations about these two bridges. I have two more bridges I'm gonna show you, and this time I want you to notice what shapes are in these bridges. So here are two more bridges, and what I mean by shapes, if you notice up here, let me get my pointer, I highlighted this red triangle that I saw in this bridge. What other shapes do you see in these two bridges. Ooh, somebody sees some triangles, arches. I noticed some arches in this one too. Rectangles. I noticed that there are some rectangles right up here. There's squares, arches. Ooh, a V shape. Interesting. Lots of triangles. squares. Yeah, I noticed the square right here. And when I look at this square, I also notice that the square is made up of four small triangles. Arches, rectangles. Ooh, someone noticed that there's also some people in this picture. That is true. There's some straight lines. Squares. Awesome. X's. I noticed some X's too. There's X's right in the middle here. Great observations, engineers. So shapes are made of lots, or bridges are made of lots of different shapes. And we're going to continue talking about how engineers might use shapes in bridges today and next time we're together. Now, we need to start planning what we want our bridge to be like. So now that we've seen four real bridges in pictures, I want you to think, what should our bridge look like, feel like, and act like? If you have some ideas, go ahead and write them in the chat box. I'm gonna keep a list of what we want our bridge to look like, feel like, and act like. Let's see, we want our bridge to be metal, have lots of support, Sturdy, yes. Ooh, some people think metal, some people think maybe wood would make a good bridge. We want our bridge to have triangles, interesting. We don't want it to be wobbly, that's true. I would not feel safe walking across a wobbly bridge. Ooh, we don't want it to be soft. See, lots of engineers are thinking it should be sturdy so it can hold human weight. 
we want it to have a good base. That's true. If it has a good base, it will be stronger. Some people think maybe a rectangle might make a good bridge. I see some people think it should be strong. Balanced, that's a great word. We want it to be balanced so it's not wobbly. Ooh, it should have beams and it should be hard. All right, have a strong foundation. I have a list here of what we want our bridge to look like, feel like, and act like, and I'm gonna hold on to this because I'm gonna use this next time we're together so we can think about our bridge made of metal. Awesome. Thank you for sharing your ideas, engineers. We're gonna continue coming back to this question next time we're together, so keep more of these ideas in your head. I'm gonna ask you again next time. All right, let's go back to our engineering design process now. We left off before at plan, which is this green bubble here. Our next bubble is create. So I would like you to take about one minute right now to go ahead and write or draw this bubble. I'm gonna write the word create. And I'm gonna try to draw a little hammer like that one because just like you told me, engineers might build things and they might use a hammer to build some things. All right, so I have my word create and I drew a little hammer. In this phase, engineers are going to build whatever they're building and they're also gonna try it out. So they're gonna see how strong it is. Go ahead and show me a raised hand when you are done filling out this bubble. Awesome, thank you engineers for showing me that you are done either by raising your hand or typing it in the chat box. Wonderful. We'll take 10 more seconds. If you're finished, you can just sit back and relax for 10 seconds. All right, and the final bubble in our engineering design process is improve. So after an engineer creates their, their building, whatever they're making, and they test it out, they're gonna think, how can I make this even better? So in my last bubble here, I'm gonna write the word improve, and I'm gonna try to draw that little thumbs up. Go ahead and take two minutes to write your last bubble, improve. Got mine all filled out here. Now the last thing I'm gonna do to my engineering design process is I'm gonna draw those little arrows in between. You might have noticed on our engineering design process, we have these little arrows that connect all the different steps. And that's because even after we make it through all of our steps, we might not be done because while we are going through this, we might come up with a new problem. We might have to start again. Engineers are gonna go through this step multiple times and they might bounce around. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw some arrows. All right. So today we started by asking our problem and we know that our problem is that I'm trying to get across the river to my friend who has something very cool to show me. Then we went to imagine and we brainstormed so many great ideas. And we decided that we were gonna choose a bridge as our solution. Then we went ahead and we started planning. So we figured out what makes a good bridge. We looked at some real bridges. We created our first little model of a bridge by using our two cups and our piece of paper. And we improved. So we figured out how to make that piece of paper even stronger. Now this does not mean that our job is done. Next time we're together, we're gonna to go through this again and we're gonna figure out how we can make even better bridges to help solve this problem. 
All right. Now, before we say goodbye for the day, I would love to know, what is one thing that you learned about engineering today? When you think of your idea, you can go ahead and type it in the chat box. What is one thing that you learned about engineering Ooh, I see that somebody's asking what the cool thing is. I'm not sure yet because we haven't solved our problem, but I'm hoping that next time we're together, we can solve that problem and figure out what that cool thing is on the other side of the river. All right. Somebody learned that engineers have to do lots of thinking. So true. Ooh, they don't give up. You can redo it. We can always make it better. Engineers make stuff strong and they make progress. Engineers have to think a lot to make things better. It's okay to try again to come up with a solution. We have to plan before we make it. We need lots of math. Engineers help people by making progress. They try different ideas. They can build things. So many great answers. Thank you so much. Ooh, engineers pr improve things. They need to build a strong foundation to hold things up. Awesome. Someone learned that when engineers fail, they think what have might gone wrong and they keep on going and never give up. That's so true. Just like we learned, our engineer process doesn't stop once we get to the end. We're gonna keep on working. Engineers have to think. That's true, you all did a lot of really hard thinking today. I appreciate that. All right. So engineers, our time today has almost come to an end, but I really hope that I'll get to see you next time for part two. Now, if you're coming back to part two, please make sure that you hang on to your engineering design process because we're gonna use that next time and we're gonna get to create some more bridges and figure out how we can improve them to make them even better. Thank you all so much for your hard work today and for giving me so many great ideas and helping me solve my problem. I can't wait to see you again next time for Think Like an Engineer part two. Bye everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs>